Hey guys, it is Mike the Wrestling God Smith. Welcome to All in Wrestling. I'm about to talk about NXT from last week and NXT from this week. Sorry guys, I haven't made a video in a while. I've been so busy with personal things. But anyway, now from what I heard from last week's NXT, so now at NXT Phoenix or TakeOver Phoenix, that we are going to get a cage match with Tommaso Ciampa, and Johnny Gargano and Aleister Black. But the weird part about all of this, right, is that now that the heel, like DIY, they came together, like him and Tommaso Ciampa came together for that one moment, which I think they could do a heel DIY segment, but I don't know if that's really going to work because the times are different from that, and the Undisputed Era are kind of a tag team and they're a four-man group against a two-man group. It wouldn't work. But here's what I don't understand, right? So, Aleister Black gets a title shot out of nowhere, which I kind of think they must have did a world, they must have did a, a number one contender spot, like at a live show event, and I'm pretty sure that's why they put it on NXT TV at the time, but here's my, here's my question to it now, is like, what is NXT going to do with all these other dudes coming from Ring of Honor, and, because I keep hearing the rumors that they might the all, you know, they might come in. The elite, which is Cody, Cody, and Cody, Kenny, and I think the Young Bucks, and I think they could come in, but I don't know because NXT is like a difficult thing for them to get used to doing because especially the WWE and Cody's past with WWE, I don't think it's really gonna happen. But anyway, back to NXT. I kind of feel like here's my point. Like here's my point to this. So we have a few, we got a feud going, and this is the feud that I kind of been wanting to happen, because now that I think Johnny Gargano and now that Tommaso Ciampa is playing a big role into this feud, where he's being kind of the puppet master, I would say like the guy behind the scenes making the kind of stoking the flames a bit, because it's like he's not really doing, he's not really doing anything, he's kind of just pushing his own agenda. On the Johnny because he's a heel and because now he wants an NXT title shot, which I get. He could be NXT champion, but I think right now, this year, isn't his time. Like, I'm going to take a word that Seth Rollins used on Monday Night Raw, which is an abject failure. See, us getting um, Johnny wrestling as its NXT champion would have been cool then if he was a face. It probably would have worked out. It probably would work out now because he's a heel. But the joke is that it's an abject failure because now that you got you got five no you got four top guys vying for that one top spot. You got Lars Sullivan trying to get after the NXT title. You got Dream trying to go after it. You got you got Aleister Black and then you got Johnny Gargano. So those four possible those four main top guys are after the title, and then you kind of have Adam Cole going after the the North American Championship because he's got it after Ricochet, and Ricochet beat um, Tyler Breeze, which is not bad, but to a point, I don't think that him going back to NXT was cool because the joke is he could have came back and if, if he would have won, it probably would have made a lot of sense because they would have brought the title. He would have had to stay on NXT and got rid of his main roster push, which would have worked, but him being on NXT wasn't like... A bad thing at the time, but now there are things coming. That now there are things coming. Bigger things are coming. Like I said, I think that Johnny Gargano is not a bad wrestler. He's not, but them they got four top guys after the one and the one top spot, and that was the thing. Like even with Raw with with Baron Corbin and his the Raw even with Raw Monday. It kind of felt like an abject failure because that's what NXT is right now. Like it's hot right now because all the four top guys are vying for a spot. That means Matt Riddle is gonna come into the picture. He's he's probably coming into the picture after Takeover because once Takeover hits, he's gonna come in the picture and nobody's gonna suspect that he's gonna play. And I think he's gonna really break Keith Lee. I think he's gonna drop him. Because Keith Lee and him are friends, but I think he's really going to drop him. Because he's not ma- he's not making a splash. He's not making really a much of an impact. Because he's like he's like a Chris Jericho wannabe. And that's something you don't get in NXT. You don't put in NXT. You don't put this guy who is okay. And I've seen his wrestling. He's great at wrestling. But the joke is there's nothing he can do because you're putting him against a dude. He's not built up yet. 
They should have waited to put him in because Matt Riddle is the big focus. So if they get Matt Riddle in, which I don't mind getting him, like a, him getting a an NXT title match, but it's just not in the cards right now because Johnny Gargano is the big, is the top four right now, the top four era, which I like to call. Just I'm, I'm just making it up, but say, and I'm putting a hypo, hypothetical, say Johnny Gargano gets the NXT championship, goes to the main roster. Goes to Raw, or he can go, he can go to SmackDown and become US US champion, and I think he can do that. That's fine, and he could be US champion. He could be WWE champion because at that point, everybody would go behind him because he's a heel. Everybody's going with him because he's a heel. When he was a face, nobody wasn't really popping for him because it was like we've seen this before, and that was the thing. Like he needed a push, and Al- Alistair Black is not a bad wrestler. He's great. He is great. Like, they need guys to get him. They need guys to push other guys. And that's my thing on that. That's my NXT part. So this is what I'm thinking, right? And I'm going to say one more thing, and I'm going to do my Raw thing. My Raw review, like I always do. Like, this is my thing, right? Raw isn't really doing anything. Like, this this is what I think about NXT, right? You got four top guys, four top guys, five mid carders, two like low card, like you know, kind of like black, kind of like very low mid card guys, which are like Keith Lee and Matt Riddle, right? Then you got Cassius Ono, then you got EC3, and then you have uh, the finest. You got him. I don't really know his real name. I can't really pronounce it. You got the finest. You got him. And the funny thing is, we don't know. Where like we don't know what they're doing, and that's the thing about NXT. They have so much caliber that it's it's like a fun, it's like a fine dining restaurant. You got the good, you got the entrees, the great entrees. You got the amazing entrees, the great entrees, and the not so great. Then you got the appetizers, and I kind of feel like having Keith Lee there is like having giving us an appetizer to this guy, right? And then we got Lars Sullivan, which he's a he's a destructive monster. We need him in the main roster. See. That's what I think. Because you got four the you got four top guys. Four top guys, two mid like three mid carders and five and maybe five low card guys. And the joke is that NXT is trying to put and that's the thing, I don't like I like Ring of Honor that it doesn't work like on WWE where there isn't a mid card guy. There's like a couple like there like it shouldn't be about the top guys, like that's the thing with WWE that I don't understand, and that's why I think like Baron Corbin, he's not gonna really get what he he wants because Vince is finally seeing this shit, like he's seeing what Raw is doing, and it, like I said, it's an abject failure because you know what, Johnny Gargano is gonna get the title, and I think he will be a good champion because he's healed and because the his. His heel persona is working because he's actually t- tapping into the dark side that he hid, which I get. And I think Candice LeRae is going to be a heel woman's champion because I think she can do it. But I just don't know how that's going to really work to a point or to a fault, really. Because it's like she's fighting Nikki Cross and Nikki Cross is on SmackDown. And that was the thing. Like, she's on SmackDown. So, to really, you're only putting her there to give her, like, one match to get her an NXT title shot, which would work. To a point, it would work. Like, getting Bianca Belair, which is cool, and she could get her own title shot, which she could probably be dominant, and she can do great. She can run, and she can do this, and she can do that, which is cool. But Bianca Belair is like a mid-card. Okay, she's her gimmick's kind of cool, but not that cool to me. I think she's trying to be another Carmella, like Carmella version 3. And that's what I kind of think of her as a a Camilla version 3 because I feel like she's not doing nothing. But anyway, guys, um, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and peace.